We're going to talk a little bit about some of the things Joe Biden said in this condescending Tulsa speech that I'm sure this guy lapped up like a dog eating Alpo. Let me tell you something. We've gone from demanding equal rights now to equal results, right? That's where we are. It's no longer good enough that government guarantee equal protection. We have to right the wrongs of the past, extract money from people that had nothing to do with the past, to give people who are not victims of the past money. It's ridiculous. And when I'm watching Joe Biden talk about all the money he's going to spend to level the playing field, to close the gap, however he wants to phrase it, all I know is that last night the average black child went to bed having done less homework than the average white child and much less homework than the average Asian American child. You explain to me how the wealth gap is going to be closed as long as that persists. Now, why is it that black kids are doing less homework every night than white kids and far less homework every night than Asian American kids? Now, for all you people on the left who listen to the Larry Elder Show, and I know that you do, because I can tell many of the things that I say sometimes seep into your writings because you have to deal with it. But for all you people on the left who listen to my show, let me ask you something. Lean very closely to your listening device because I'm talking to you. Has it ever occurred to you that this constant bombardment with this nonsense of systemic racism, foundational racism, endemic racism, structural racism, systematic racism, has it ever occurred to you that you are discouraging black people to study as hard as whites and much less hard than Asians because what's the point? Nobody likes studying, or very few do. Overcoming laziness is one of the hardest things all of us have in life. And here you are telling young black people, it doesn't matter what you do. The man's going to hold you back. It doesn't matter what you do. America is endemically, systemically racist. It doesn't matter what you do. Sooner or later, a cop's going to pull pull you over and put a bullet in your head. You know, I read a poll of self-described liberals, very liberal people. Nearly half of them believe that a thousand unarmed black people are killed every year. A thousand. You know what the number is? Twenty-five. And 9% of people that were described as very liberal believe 10,000 unarmed black men are killed by cops every year. Again, the number 25. So these are the people that are spooning this stuff to you. Do you think that there's a combination, a, a connection between working hard and success? You certainly think so on the basketball court. You wouldn't respect a basketball player who didn't practice. 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 That's why it was a joke. Because everybody knows there's a relationship between how hard you practice, how well you practice, how long you practice, and how well you're going to perform. It's a given. But it's not a given in academia? Well, why aren't you doing it? Why should I? Eric Holder just told me that we no longer have blatant racism, we have pernicious racism. Eric Holder just now told me, well, if I get kicked out of class disproportionately, it's because of pernicious racism. Eric Holder just told me if I'm a criminal and I get a longer sentence than a a white criminal who did the same crime, it's because of uh, pernicious racism. Eric Holder just told me the push for voter ID is because of pernicious racism. Joe Biden says systemic and systematic racism infuses every aspect of American life. Then why am I busting my butt? What's the point? Has it ever occurred to you that you are discouraging young black people from working hard, from believing in themselves, from doing the same kind of thing you did to become successful? Keep your head down, defer gratification, stay focused, invest in yourself. Has it ever occurred to you, you are discouraging young black people from doing that very same thing that you did to become successful? Now, one more thing I want to say about you people in the media and your refusal to investigate the allegation that the COVID 
virus might have escaped from the lab. This is one of the greatest mass homicides in world history. More Americans have died from the coronavirus than, than have died in combat from World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War combined. And you couldn't be bothered to investigate one of the biggest mass homicides in world history because you hate Donald Trump's guts? And I played you a doctor yesterday who said hydroxychloroquine could have saved 100,000 lives. 100,000 lives that we lost because you in the media denounced hydroxychloroquine. You in the media created the pressure that banned doctors from using it. A drug that's been used in Italy for years. Your hatred of Donald Trump meant that you engage in journalistic malpractice. Swallowed hook, line, and sinker the crap that the World Health Organization was saying. Put no pressure on China, therefore, to come clean. And this false, bogus, fake narrative of systemic racism is causing cops to pull back. It's called the Ferguson effect. Now it's called the Minneapolis effect or the George Floyd effect. Causing cops to pull back. Bad guys know it. Crime goes up. The victims of the crime are the very people you claim you care about. And as I said, young black men having been taught, told, indoctrinated that cops, when they pull them over, are going to do them harm. Why in the world should they comply? Why would I comply with somebody who's pulling me over to do harm to me? This is what you've done. And you have the nerve now to accuse America of being systemically racist. One of the authors of critical race theory, one of the purveyors of it, is named Ibram Kendi. He was asked at a forum in the audience that I looked at, looked like several hundred people, almost all of them appeared to be white. And he was asked very politely and very respectfully, how do you define racism? I'm going to have his answer for you when we come back. 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243. I'm Larry Elder. <laughs> 